So I really enjoy doing number talks in my class because I feel like it takes the ownership away from me. So I'm not the one with all the answers. I'm not the one telling the kids this is what the answers are, this is how you get them. It's giving them the opportunity to collectively build their mathematical understanding. So um, they're structured in such a way where if one child has one idea, I'm able to sort of focus on that and say, oh, that's really interesting, hoping that someone picks that up for the next part of our number talk and that they're moving forward and applying what they're collectively learning together. So beginning number talks in kindergarten is really special because the kids are coming to you as a blank slate. So I'm lucky in that sense where I'm not having to sort of undo any negative feelings that they might have about math because they don't know what math is yet. So we're already able to on day one identify as mathematicians. We're not sure what mathematicians do or who they are, but we already have that belief in ourselves that, that we are mathematicians. Um, and we start with uh, raising our hand and then we slowly talk about, okay, well we're not going to raise our hands because that turns off other kids thinking because then they're distracted and okay what's another way that we could show our thinking that isn't distracting for others and that's why we think from the heart or we think with our thumbs um, and number talks start really slow and they're quite short when we start in kindergarten just because our stamina isn't very high yet so it'll start with um, just dot cards even subitizing um, and then we slowly build up from there as we develop language and the ability to listen um, attentively to others speaking. The language that we use in number talks is literally the language that the kids are using. So if they're referring to something um, for example, one of our strategies we have in our class is same top and bottom, and that just refers to if you have a set of six with three on the top, three on the bottom, well, if you count the top and you see that there's three, you don't have to count the bottom, so same top and bottom. So the language that we use within the class um, is just the language that the kids have been using, and then it just makes more sense to them, and they are able to refer to it more with ease. I think one of the early successes that motivated me to keep going was to see the children or to hear the children referring to something we had done previously or making connections between each other or previous lessons and saying, oh, uh, that's so-and-so's rule from last time and that's how I know the answer. Um, so seeing that it was starting to stick and seeing that they were able to apply what we had been collectively as a group working on. I think that was one of the early successes that I was like, okay, yes, this is why we're doing this. And then also seeing them in their independent work or their partner work or their counting collections start to apply those rules or those sequences that we had sort of talked about as well. What's challenging for me in number talks is not telling the kids what they should be saying or rephrasing what they're saying in a way that isn't kid friendly. So if they're telling me the way they're thinking um, or the way they're seeing something or the way they've visualized the number, that I am taking exactly what they're saying and that's how I'm documenting it on the board. And then if I'm unsure, I have them physically come up and show me just to make sure that I'm not taking my adult math brain and sort of superimposing the way that I would organize what they're telling me based on my knowledge, but actually using what their kindergarten knowledge is. Uh, my students' number sense has grown through number talks and it was really evident the other day I did the kindergarten math screener um, and I didn't do it in the fall this year. Uh, so it was the first time I had done it with this group and usually this time of the year I find that they are quite proficient in most areas uh, 
but it was really interesting to do it with them and hear them just be so articulate. So the parts where it asks, well, how do you know, or you're kind of getting them to justify their thinking. I didn't even have to prompt a lot of the time and they were already ready, they already knew how to explain their thinking or that they could explain their thinking and they had the language there already. So today's lesson, the whole point was to sort of guide the children towards seeing doubles or near doubles, which I would say they definitely did. They definitely saw doubles and they definitely saw near doubles. Um, so that was a success. I was really excited when one student started to see groups of two in a different way. It wasn't part of the lesson and it wasn't really a goal of the lesson, but it was an interesting thing for her to bring up and then another student, when she struggled to put language to it, another student was able to say, oh, this is what it sounds like when you count by twos. Um, and I tried towards the end of the lesson to see if we could do it again. And I think for next time, I'm wondering if I could scaffold it in such a way where maybe we are slowly moving towards counting by twos. Um, and we could add that depending on who brings it up or says, oh, we could count by twos, this is what it sounds like. Then we can take that rule, that's Brooklyn's rule, and then we can add it to our, our math strategy board and then the children are able to refer to it in, in number talks in the future. What was surprising today was one child who said, oh, I saw four plus four, and then I just took one away and knew it was seven. So it's telling me that the number talks, the way that they're scaffold and the goal that they have, they are working because there are children that are grasping onto what I'm sort of carefully guiding them along to. And when they're bringing it to light and they're saying, oh, this is what I'm seeing or this is how, this is my efficient strategy, um, it's letting the other kids know who are listening, like, oh, that is an efficient strategy. Maybe I can try that next time. For a teacher that's just starting out, I would say don't overthink it. It's going to be bumpy. It's going to feel yucky for you, only because as adults, we already have this idea of what we think or what we've experienced math as. So when you're doing something completely different from what you've experienced or what you have taught or a way that you've taught in the past, it's going to feel kind of it. But the kids aren't gonna know. They're not gonna have any idea of what it should look like. So the kids are actually going to help guide you and they're sort of gonna be the teachers when you are starting out. Um, so I would just say trust the process, stick with it. You might feel like it flops, but I promise it's not flopping.